Hola, buenos días. Eh, bienvenidos a el Instituto Smithsonian, a la estación de Campo en Fortuna, en Chiriquí, provincia de Chiriquí, República de Panamá. Así que bienvenidos y pásenla bien. Well, we're, we're at Fortuna, that's a research station in Panama, at the Motain Forest. I'm Gerhard Sotz, so I'm a professor at the University of Oldenburg in, in Germany, and I'm also like a research associate of the Smithsonian Institute. Well, there's a, a more complicated uh, answer a scientist would give, but I, I make it simple. And an epiphyte is a plant that lives on another plant without parasitizing it. Diana Gomez, a Panamanian, she's looking at the role in the system of bryophytes in supplying, giving this steady supply of water. A bryophyte is a, well, a non-vescular plant, uh, sometimes they say simple plant, but probably a lot of biologists would insist just different kind of strategy, who are, for example, uh, able to give up all their water and survive, and then just like replenish the the water content once it's raining again. And of course, like in a very uh, intermittently supply uh, environment, like the canopy, there may be actually the superior strategy. My name is Diana Gomez. I study at the University of Oldenburg. I'm doing my doctorate, which is in Germany. I'm doing a study about epiphytas in the mountain forest. Y algo también sobre el trasplante simulando calentamiento global de briófitas. Cuando llegamos al campo, generalmente escogimos los árboles al azar, no especificándonos en especie, pero sí en el diámetro a la altura del pecho, para tener más o menos categorías, eh, como cinco de cada eh, categoría, y son en total 24 árboles. Luego de esto, removemos las epífitas eh, ayudándonos con un cuchillo y si no es necesario, solo con la mano. Al llegar al laboratorio, entonces las separamos clasificándolas en material orgánico, en briófitos, líquenes, eh, bromelias, orquídeas y el resto de las plantas vasculares. Estamos considerando ahora mismo también algo de las hemiepífitas, pero no de las lianas. Después que les tomamos el peso fresco, las sumergimos en agua para obtener luego lo que es la retención de agua que ellas captan. Esto alrededor de unas 5 horas para luego dejarlas escurrir por 30 minutos y entonces tomarles nuevamente el peso. Una vez hacemos esto, eh, se prensan para secar y luego de esto se toma el peso seco. Después del peso seco, entonces se analizan los resultados de biomasa que hemos obtenido. My name is Jennifer Sanger and I'm a PhD student from the University of Tasmania in Australia. My project is going to be looking at what effect host tree has on the composition of epiphytes. Here is an example of a tree fern. As you can see here, it's got quite a bit of epiphyte growth on it, almost 100% cover. And as you can see, there's quite a, a strong variety of different uh, plants that are growing here different types of ferns, orchids, uh, we've got some tiny little filmy ferns growing in here as well as um, some liverworts and a few different types of moss species in there as well. There's probably about four or five different species growing in this little area here. So this is a palm tree uh, with another type of host that I am studying. And as you can see, it's quite different to the tree fern. Uh, there's only really one type of moss and it only covers maybe about 30% or 40% of the trunk. So back at the lab, I have been getting the samples and then sorting them into species. There's quite a few um, vascular species in this part of the world. Um, so yeah, I've been um, building up a, a list of the species in each, each of the host trees. Um, the bryophytes, I've been doing a slightly different method. Because the diversity of bryophytes 
here is also so high and a lot of them are very hard to tell apart with different species because with some of the bryophytes um, the differences between two species may come down to the cellular level so you really need to get a microscope out and look at the different cell sizes and the cell shapes to actually tell if that's a different different species and now the amount of the amount of samples that I'm collecting that would be absolutely or close to impossible to do that because of the amount of time and so what I have been doing is I've been sorting the bryophytes um, I've just selected 30 species that are quite distinct and quite common uh, and I've just been working with those 30 species and rec recording for each host tree if what ones of the 30 species that they have are growing on them and this will give us an idea of community composition without having to do the whole range of species. I do a lot of tree climbing for my PhD. It's very time consuming and it can be very challenging and frustrating at times, but it's a lot of fun because we get to experience a part of the rainforest that hardly anyone gets to spend time in. No es fácil todavía para mí porque no tengo tanta experiencia, pero lo disfruto mucho y tampoco siento que sea algo muy difícil de hacer. No he tenido ninguna experiencia desagradable ni peligrosa todavía, así que mientras puedo, lo hago con gusto. So we start off by selecting a tree that is suitable to climb. That usually means that there are some sturdy branches uh, that are clear from vines and that we can get an easy shot at. We then use the big shot to shoot a small line up into the, the branches of the trees. And then from that line we actually pull up the um, climbing rope like this one. So the method of tree climbing that we use is called single rope technique. It was developed probably about 30 years ago and it's a combination of what uh, the types of styles that they use in rock climbing and caving. So what we use is ascenders like these um, to climb up the rope and then we also use uh, grigris like this to, um, to descend. Aprendí a trepar árboles en Oldenburg con una colega que se llama Helena Einsman. Ella fue muy gentil y nos dio las clases para saber cómo subir y poder realizar mi proyecto. Bueno, este proyecto ha sido realizado en la parte de colecta con la ayuda, sobre todo trepando árboles de Jennifer Sanga. Steve Pierce y colectando sin subir René Araúz, Jan Gagnon y pues por supuesto también subiendo árboles Calixto Rodríguez a quien ya mencioné anteriormente. <música>